We're back. I'm Dave Donaldson. Welcome back to Grip Tips. Today we're going to be taking a look at a K5600 product known as the Joker 300 LED unit. We're not going to waste any time. We're going to break right into our Joker 300 LED kit. We have a very familiar case style to its HMI brothers, a convenient flap in the top of the case to hold a bag full of scrims and lenses, and then moving down into the bottom of the case, we have a 25 foot extension for our head cable. Now this next part won't always come inside of the kit, but K5600 also sent me their focal spot attachment to try out as well, which will turn the unit into a 40 or 20 degree ellipsoidal depending on the lens but we'll get into that a little bit later. We also have the newer style ballast, which will give us all of our controls and power. Barn doors also come inside of the kit. And then last but not least, the head of the lamp itself. I really like the sleek, simple color design that K5600 has been implementing into all of their lights. And right out of the gate, I'm already happy with the way that this light is feeling. It feels like I could run over it with a car while still managing to be lightweight. There's also something behind this like mesh design that makes me think that the light it almost looks like a flamethrower. The light also carries over the newer yoke style system they've implemented on all of their lights. And basically up into the point of actually striking the light on, everything is straightforward exactly like an HMI system from K5600. Now, one thing I did notice when I was actually striking the light on, it's actually kind of slow. Like it, it takes like three seconds for it to actually strike on completely. But I mean, this isn't really a big deal. It's just something I noticed because a lot of other LED units that are out there, they're pretty instant. So. I kind of was amazed that that took a second, but maybe there's a reason behind that. However, something else about the light that I noticed before striking it on is that the chip on board is probably the smallest that I've ever seen. Um, in fact, it's about the size of a dime, and I find that to be really, really impressive. See, the thing is with those chip on board uh, or light emitting surface, whatever you actually really want to call it, I know it's called a couple of things, but the smaller that that is, is actually better because you, it's actually making the light a lot sharper, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, and you can always take a sharper light and you can make it softer, but you can't go in reverse. So the smaller that you can actually make that with a, with a very high output, uh, the happier I am. But moving on, we can control the light in increments of a tenth of a percent so that you can really dial in how much output you actually need from the light. And this little white button on the left below where it says lamp one when tapped will let you control between multiple units. Yes, this with the addition of their splitter box can actually power a couple of heads, such as K5600's slice panels, giving you control of multiple light sources from the exact same ballast. So if you wanted to have, say, two lights giving you opposite color temps, such as this example using my roommate, Sean, to edge him with a daylight tint and then to key with a tungsten feel, you could totally do that with one ballast and two lights. But back on the ballast though, we can actually dial in our color temp anywhere between 6,500 degrees and 2,700. And on the right side, there's also a little white button which can be pressed uh, to help us configure something like frequency settings. And you high speed, slow motion guys are going to love this. You can dial anywhere between one to 100 kilohertz and it will even tell you what bit resolutions as well. So flicker with this light is like damn near impossible. Back in the menus though, you have DMX setup, which if I had a DMX system or even just experience in a DMX system, I would show in more detail, but know that there's a wired option and a wireless option. Uh, you have the ability to customize how you'd like to have the unit's interface displayed, whether that's toggling the contrast, how bright you'd like the display to be, or if you would like the unit to automatically dim after a few moments of not touching it. There's also the ability to check out each lamp you have attached to the ballast in terms of watts, software, and voltage. So that's the ballast side of things. Now let's take some light measurements. Keep in mind, I'm using a Lumu Power uh, attachment for my phone uh, to take these readings. So it's questionable on the accuracy about this. So take it with a little bit of grain of salt. I mean, I've, I've, I've used it side by side with somebody else's and it tends to do a pretty good job, but it's always, it always tends to be a little bit off. And I trust a company like Sekonic, uh, seeing as they make pretty much all the meters, but I don't have $2,400. So, you know, November's coming up, buy a t-shirt or just, just buy me a, a $2,400 meter. God, I'm an ass. So this is a bicolor light, and I know one of the major complications with LEDs is that once bicolor LEDs start to dip into the tungsten range, it tends to output less light. So I wanted to see if that was existent with this light, like other LED lights, and the same issue still exists. Now that's not really K5600's uh, fault. This light came out last year, like mid last year, um, and the technology just wasn't there, I guess, when they were developing it. Um, I mean, you can see this on a lot of other LED units. As soon as you start to dip into that tungsten range, man, you know, your, your exposure starts to drop. So it's just something to keep in mind. It has the same problem as all the other LEDs. However, I did want to see how this light would do with a light that it's been compared uh, with quite a bit. 
which is also from K5600. It's their 400 watt Joker HMI. So I went further to see if I could find the brightest point of the LED as far as color temp at 100% brightness, and it's around 6200 degrees Kelvin. My meter said that it was giving me a little over 63,000 lux, being open-faced, and oddly enough, the 400 HMI that I rented also gave me a color reading around 6200 and gave me a lux reading of 93,990 with a frosted beaker. Now, for those of you who don't know, just to kind of catch you up a little bit, a beaker is basically this like cup uh, that goes over the globe inside of an HMI. Uh, this one's frosted, as you can tell, you can't see through it. Uh, you can get other beakers that you can see through, um, <clears throat> which will give you a little bit of a harder light uh, coming out of the fixture, but this one didn't have it, so I just decided to kind of go around it and just take the beaker off altogether and then get some readings. You'd probably never actually do this on set, or maybe you would, I don't, I don't know. It tends to change around all the time, but uh, science, why not? Let's take it off and take some readings. And the reading came up to 185,220 lux open-faced. And since I told you guys what a beaker is, I'm also gonna tell you what open-faced means. Open-faced basically means that uh, on the light itself, uh, you normally would put like lenses or you'd have diffusion over the uh, uh, in front of the light uh, But if there's no diffusion if there's no Fresnel lenses if there's no lenses in general uh, That's called being open face. So just a little fact But here's a look between an HMI without a beaker and an HMI with a frosted beaker through a super wide lens or aka stipple lens breaking up the light, and the lights come pretty close to each other, being a 600 lux difference of one another. Uh, with no beaker, the reading was 4,927 lux, and with a frosted beaker, it was 4,476. But going back to the initial frosted beaker in an HMI compared to a 300 LED, as that is what this episode is about, uh, at first glance, using a stipple lens to break up both lights, I'm noticing a very close match with the HMI coming in at 4,476 lux, and the 300 coming in at 3, 1,119. So the HMI is just under 1,400 lux brighter than the 300, which you can clearly see in the shadows. But overall, the 300 looks very close in comparison and kind of felt that way through the rest of the lenses I tested with it. Now, the biggest difference that I see in this LED is actually not on some of the wider shots. It's actually the close-ups where I notice it the most. Uh, the problem is with LED lights, uh, and I mean, this is going to be an open face example, uh, but with LED lights, because there's so many LEDs inside of one light, you have a multi-source light, uh, not a single source. The HMI, on the other hand, is actually just one single source. It's coming out of that one globe. It's that one HMI gas globe that's actually shooting the light as opposed to multiple. So you're actually going to catch some artifacts with LEDs uh, when you're being open-faced, but honestly, that's only my concern, I think, with close-ups and looking at the shadows in these shots, you can actually see these artifacts pop up as soon as uh, you start to squeeze any type of pattern out of it. So if you have like barn doors or something like that, as soon as you start to close, you have all these multiple sources that are gonna start creating some artifacts in your, in your video that you're not gonna like. But again, this is only kind of something that you're gonna notice in a close-up shot. I did go a little further and decided to see if I could notice anything between exposing for the brightness of the LED to the Joker 400 by diffusing both lights with 216 diffusion and roughly the same color temp. Here, I'm only changing the exposure and color of the camera to see if the shadows would match or not. The HMI being at F14 and the LED being at F12 at roughly four to six feet away. Even being desaturated, I think I barely notice a real difference. I, could, I couldn't really see it. I mean, I think I see it inside of one of the shots, uh, but the other one, not so much. Uh, maybe my eyes are playing tricks with me, but again, this, is, this, this isn't really that close up of a shot. So to say that that problem before with, you know, having a multi-source light is a problem, not really. If you're diffusing it, you're, I don't think it's, I don't think anybody's going to notice. Now, I know that I'm kind of, I, I keep crapping all over LEDs here or anything, and it's not that I'm not a fan of this. I'm, the fact that I can change between 2700 degrees Kelvin or 6500 degrees Kelvin at the turn of a knob, that makes me super happy, especially being at some of these wider shots. Um, but one of the other problems that is with any LED is that there's kind of a misconception out there that uh, LEDs don't get hot. Uh, that's not true. Um, LEDs actually do get hot. You either need a really carefully planned heat sink system to keep the temperature at the right amount, uh, where an HMI can burn for like 400 degrees all day long. Uh, and not have a problem, but LEDs either need a really carefully planned heat sink system or they need a fan. And fans are a problem when it comes to sound. So this light does have a fan. 
uh, which means it's going to be a little bit louder. So I ran a little bit of test. This will be the first test with just the Joker and how it sounds uh, using the same mic that I'm wearing right now, which is this Rode to go. Oh my God, I'm sweating so bad. This is a, this is a Rode wireless go mic, uh, but I'm using this uh, in this example to show exactly the sound between HMI and an LED. Okay, so that was the HMI portion. And yeah, you hear a little bit of a buzzing sound. I find that that tends to go away as the light cooks. I, I, they actually sent me articles as to why that happens and I just, I didn't get around to reading it. Uh, but now let's try out the LED with the fan. It's probably a good three or four feet away. I did this at multiple levels because I wanted to see if it would get higher or lower. The good news about this uh, light is that as you decrease uh, the output, the fan gets quieter and quieter. So I actually took this very same mic and I clipped it to the yoke of it. So I'm just gonna show you guys 100%. Put the microphone right on it. Seventy three, still a fan, but it's it's very, very hard to hear it. Fifty three percent. So that is that test. So what is my overall opinion about this light? I'm going, to, I'm going to be honest as best as I can, and hopefully I don't rant uh, too long about this, but in my personal opinion, I think K5600 is kind of late to the LED lighting game, but I do think that they came fashionably late. One, they have the build quality. You have to keep in mind that K5600 has been making HMI uh, Joker units for years, 20 plus years or something. I think it was like their first Joker series came out in like, the early 90s or something like that. So that's something to be considered. They already know from years of experience. You can even see it too, because like some of the units that were bought back in the day are still working today. I mean, the first episode that I did with the Joker 800, that was an old unit. Um, who knows how old it was, but in general, that's still, that's still working. They recently made their updates to the Joker 2 units, which I showed with the 800 watt and you could see the improvements that have come a long way from all those years of experience. And you could see exactly that they take the build quality seriously, which to me, that's a little bit of that research and development that they've been doing. Also being able to have that chip on board being that small, I'm very, very impressed with that. The fact that you can power two lights off of one ballast, I think that's awesome. That's gonna cut down on cables and wires all over the place. I mean, their extensions, uh, they come in like 25 feet. So if you think about it off of one ballast and then the heads themselves have nine foot cords, that's like a 60 foot spread to point at, at one thing by color. I just think that that's impressive that you can, you can put that much and daisy chain it like that. So. I do think that it still kind of falls into the same line with a lot of other LEDs that are out there. And I know it doesn't have a bunch of effects and it's not RGB, WW, and et cetera, like Aperture has been putting out there. But also keep in mind, even, even a company like Aperture has the 300X. It's a bi-color light because as much as LEDs are getting very popular with the RGB, uh, nine times out of 10, you're gonna be in that, that color temperature range of 32 to 5600K or 6500. So really they kind of nailed it in my opinion. So special thank you to K5600 for sending me this light. Guys, I really appreciate it. I saw it at Cinegear Atlanta and I really wanted to get my hands on it to kind of compare it with other things that I've used. So definitely appreciate it. I think you guys did a bang up job on the build and et cetera. Like I just explained. But sadly, that is all that I have for you guys today. If you liked today's episode, please let me know in the comment section below. You can also follow me on Twitter right here. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one. Am I seriously sweating that much? Oh, my man titties are lactating. My man titties are lactating. <laughs>